morning. Thank you very much for inviting me to participate in this Global Peace Forum conference. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, very much for having me here. And I commend all of you for your participation in this conference because we are here, because we are committed to building a civil society. The full text of my remarks appear in the program. I will give a condensed version in order to keep the program moving, if I may. But let me start with a basic question. That is, how do I define a civil society? Simply stated, a civil society is an assembly of individuals working through private sector organizations, coming together voluntarily to work toward a shared common goal. I want to discuss with you briefly why civil society reign, remains important to us for our shared objective of a reunited and free people on the entire Korean Peninsula. The theory of a civil society evolved out of the thinking of the French aristocrat Alexis de Tocqueville, who visited the United States almost two centuries ago, 1831. He traveled around the New World, and he was impressed with our political system of the new nation. He extolled the virtues of participation by the people in the affairs of their government. But he also reported on a different but complementary development that he observed in his travel throughout America. That was the large number of voluntary associations that had been formed to tackle local problems at the local level without the direction and control of the government. Tocqueville hoped that the voluntary associations formed by individuals would not be affected by or directed by government. Therefore, I believe we are in need of private voluntary associations, so well represented here today and at tonight's banquet, which are essential components of a mature political structure, not only in the United States, but also throughout the developed world. Going back to Tocqueville once more, let me quote him on the essential character of these voluntary associations. Quote, in democratic countries, the science of associations is the mother of science. The progress of all the others depends on that one. In other words, he says, the voluntary associations of which I am speaking, NGOs, clubs, religious organizations, civic associations, are not some mere afterthought. Rather, they are at the core of our shared democratic system. So I thank all of you for your commitment to civil society today. In my paper, I give several examples about challenges to civil society in Asia, one from the PRC and one from North Korea. We can draw certain conclusions from this, I believe. It is that the most effective way for a government to secure its power, its monopoly of power, is to eliminate civil society. That's why what we do is so important. Today in the United States, virtually everyone says they are in favor of civil society. But not everyone understands what a civil society actually means. Some of our friends speak of civil society, but they imply that that means, oh, here's something else for the government to do. That's exactly wrong. Civil society is separate from and independent of government. Other times, NGOs are not only a valid way to achieve shared objectives, they can be the most effective way. And here, I think, frankly, all of our governments, whether I am talking about the United States, Europe, think of the current crisis in Greece, or developed Asia, are at or near their limits in what they can do, or at least what they can do competently in promoting the welfare of the individual. In other words, I believe the welfare state has generally reached its limits. And not just because of the cost of government, because of the inherent problem of bureaucratic top-down approaches to dealing with these matters of social concern. Now, I've discussed the importance of civil society 
as a core component of democracy. People voluntarily coming together to solve problems themselves rather than relying on the government to do it. Through civil society, we have individuals who understand trust and responsibility rather than assuming someone else will solve every problem. I see society as an organic outgrowth that begins in loving family attachments, extends outward into personal commitments and relationships through civil society, through religious organizations, reaching further outward toward broader regional affiliates and concluding eventually in a national identity. And here, if I may inject a personal point of view that I hope is commonly shared here, we all know that belief in a divine being, that is a sincere religious belief, is the basis of human exchanges and therefore the bedrock for a successful civil society. It is what builds trust among and between ourselves as well as giving us hope for the future. Beyond this freely accepted belief, yes, I believe government does have a role in building society, but it should be limited, and I define that in my paper again. Today, as we gather here, I am optimistic about the future of our bottom-up civil society because of the technological revolution we are currently undergoing. When millions of citizens in the United States and throughout the world are using smartphones, the internet, social media, we have a whole new way of reaching out to individual people who are the bedrock of our civil society. I hope you will take action to build and enable this civil society to flourish in this new environment. I really believe technology is effectively helping our civil societies flourish. It's a way for the individual to make her or his voice heard, and heard more effectively than through a governmentally provided top-down way. It can be more creative, more responsive, more flexible, and finally, more effective than the old way of doing things from the top down. My challenge to all of you today is to embrace these forms of new bottom-up ways of achieving shared objectives through our independent institutions of a true civil society. We must encourage the new generation to commit to, to a civil society. And regarding our gathering today, for a true civil society to flourish or to have an impact, voluntary organizations must come together. They must each in their own way add and multiply to combine for their, with their particular strengths. Do not subtract and divide among yourselves over subsidiary and irrelevant questions and issues. The basis of our thinking depends on the power of ideas. Yes, we believe ideas have consequences. And the shared human ideas of expanded freedom, expanded opportunity, particularly in education, expanded entrepreneurial activity, expanded electoral participation is worthy of the renewed commitment of all of us who are participating in this important convocation of civil society leaders committed again to that shared objective of a unified Korea and a prosperous civil society on the entire peninsula. Kamsamida. Thank you very much.